Yeah, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come tonight to go in your word to have this Bible study, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be with us, to guide us into all truth, that we, as we share with one another, as we go into your word, that we would be edified and noble and enlightened, that we may be able to grow upward in Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that whatever we learn even tonight, that we'll be able to share it with others as we come into con contact with them from day to day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so tonight we're going to be dealing with the Great Controversy, part one. Um, this, this is part four of the Everlasting Gospel series that we are doing. So this is, uh, we're going to be going through what is this Great Controversy. Um, in the last studies that we did, we, we, we came to an understanding of why God had to, um, he had to go through this whole thing with uh, creating the plan of salvation. And we realized that it is because that God gave choice to all his sentient creatures. And we, when that choice came, then it was possible it was possible for his sentient creatures to rebel against him. So he had to put a plan in place should that occur, that he would be able to deal with that problem. So it was not an afterthought. He had to do it before the problem um, sh should arise. Um, and that doesn't say it, 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 it had to arise, but God in his foreknowledge knew that it would have happened. That doesn't make him responsible for it. It just makes shows that he knew knew everything that was going to happen from before. So we will see in this 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 evening study that in all things God had a a a, a plan in place, and now we're going to see now this how this rebellion started and the consequences of this rebellion. So a thought for us. God in his eternal purposes knew that sin would exist. He allowed it to take its course so that the inhabitants of the universe could have a clear understanding of its nature and results. It originated in the highest created being, which was Lucifer, and in the most unlikely of places, heaven. This fact should humble us to know that no matter how high our rank, Obedience is the only safety we have, and Christ is the only one who can keep us obedient to God's laws by his power. So we, we, we see from this thought that the highest creature that God created, sin originated in that creature. And we see because of that fact, everyone should be humbled by that. Because it means that none of us are safe unless we are submitted to God and submitted to Christ. So that, that I hope that resonates in our mind as we go through the study this evening. So the first thought for this evening is that God created all things perfect until sin was found in the highest created being, Lucifer. And that is taken from Ezekiel 28, verse 15 and 16. It says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So we see here when God created everything, even Lucifer, he was perfect in all his ways, right? In all the way that whatever God created him to do, whatever God created him to be, he was perfect in that, in that office that he occupied until iniquity was found in him right so iniquity started with lucifer not with god and you know a lot of people have this idea that god is the one who's responsible for sin but we see from this text clearly that sin was originated from lucifer not from god now we see lucifer opposed god's government and sowed seeds of discord among the inhabitants of heaven. Revelation 12, 7 tells us, and there was war in heaven. 
Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels and the dragon fought and his angels. So we see here that the most unlikely of places of war to start, it started in heaven. And we see in this war, on one side we have Michael and his angels and on the other side we have the dragon and his angels. So Lucifer became Satan and was thrown out of heaven with all his sympathizers. So when this, this controversy reached its climax in heaven, Lucifer became Satan and he was thrown out of heaven with all of his sympathizers. So continuing in Revelation 12, verses 8 and verse 9, it says, And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So after all of this controversy happened, this is what happened after. No place was found for them in heaven anymore. And because of that, they were cast out of heaven. Now this particular text has a dual meaning. It's not only speaking about what happened um, before it was created, but it also happened. It also is speaking of what happened at the cross. So it has a dual meaning. It's, it's saying that Satan was cast out of heaven before it was created, yet he and his angels, but it's also saying Satan was cast down when Christ died upon the cross. So it has, and, and actually the second explanation that I just gave is actually, is, it is, it is more emphasis on that than on the 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 emphasis that was talking about before the world was created. So Revelation 12, 8 and 9 is really speaking more so about Satan being cast out of heaven when Christ died upon the cross. And we will understand how that happened in some later studies. But we see here that when this climax came, when the climax came to this, this battle in heaven, this war in heaven, Satan was cast out with his angels. But he was cast out onto earth and, it's, and it's Adam joined Satan in his rebellion, going against the ex, an explicit command of God. So when God gave that explicit command, it was not, it, it was not ambiguous. It, Adam knew exactly what God meant when he gave that command and Adam went against it and in doing so he joined Satan in rebellion Genesis 2 16 and 17 and chapter 3 verse 6 it says and the Lord commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou may free eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So, we see here that God gave an explicit man, you can eat from all the trees of the garden, but you cannot eat from the tree that is in the midst of the garden. But then what happened? The woman saw that the tree, and you notice what is was highlighted in red, a tree to be desired to make one wise. So she, des she coveted wisdom. She coveted being wise. And wiser than God, it would seem. Right? Because of the deception of the serpent. And what she did, she gave also to her husband. No, no. When she when she gave to her husband, Adam was not ignorant of what God told him, because we notice in verse sixteen it says God commanded the man. Now, man there can mean Adam, or man there can mean mankind, or mankind there would be Adam and Eve together. But in the truest sense, it means Adam. And he commanded Adam and told Adam of this. And Adam, knew, knowing God's command, he took the fruit and he still ate it, which shows that he made a choice to rebel against God. 
So because of that, Adam forfeited his rulership of the realm of earth to Satan and could no longer represent the territory. So because Adam forfeited his rulership of earth, when, the, when, it, when it came time for him to represent earth, he would not be there because why? He would be dead. Right? He would not have been alive to represent earth. And he lost that um, he lost that connection that he would have with God. So because of that lost connection, he could no longer represent it. And we'll understand a little more as we, when, we, when, we, when we go into a little depth further into the study this evening, we'll understand what that loss, that, that connection, why, is it, why the connection between Adam and God is, is, is important in order to, for him to represent the territory of earth. So Luke 4, 5 and 6 tells us, and the devil that's taken him up into a high mountain, that's Jesus, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. I mean, this is what Satan says here. It, the kingdom and the glory of it has been delivered unto him. And he can give it to whomever he pleases. Now, we'll understand that a little more as we go into the study later on. So Adam forfeited his rulership again of the realm of earth. And Job 1, 6 and 7 continues that confirmation. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence come, comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So Satan here, when he, God called an assembly, you know, to represent the different territories, um, it didn't say this was heaven. It just says a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. We do not know where, where, this, where, this, where this happened, but wherever it happened, Satan came with them. And when God asked Satan where he, where he came from, he says he's going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. In other words, he's running things down on earth because he is the ruler of the earth. And we know the whole story of Job where God showed that he is not the full ruler of the earth because there's one person who is not following him in, what, in, in his kingdom. And that was Job. And we know the story of Job. John 14, 30 tells us, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So Jesus acknowledged that Christ, that um, that Satan, sorry, was the prince of this world. So he himself, Christ himself, recognized that Satan was the prince of this world. And even today, as we when we live in this world today, we we wouldn't um we wouldn't question that. This world as it exists now, in all of the evil that it has, you know, Satan is the, the prince of this world, right? But we would understand a little more that, yes, while he's the prince, and it didn't say, you know, notice it didn't say king, eh? it just said prince. And there's a reason why, why it says prince and not king. So he's the prince of this world. So Christ himself acknowledged that, that fact. Continuing, so Satan's controversy. So this great controversy, this, the controversies with Christ as the Son of God, that is actually the main controversy. That, that is the main reason why we why we are in this whole sin, quote unquote, experiment. Because Satan had a problem with Christ being the Son of God. Matthew chapter four verse 3a and verses 5 to 6a and it says there and when the tempter came to him that's the christ he said if thou be the son of god then the devil take him up into the into the holy city and set him upon a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of god so every time right that in these two temptations Satan presented himself before Christ, he always is questing in Christ's position as the Son of God. And that is his main controversy. 
So Christ, the Prince of the Covenant, must now meet Satan on the battlefield of earth to destroy his power over the realm. So Satan, because Satan took or usurped the power from Adam, to get back that usurped power, Christ must now come and meet Satan on in his territory, which is this earth, and defeat him in his territory so that he can regain that territory for heaven. Genesis 3.15, we know this well, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and, be and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise her seed. So this year is the first mention of the gospel in the Bible. It's called the Proto-Evangelium and it means that this is the first proclamation of the Savior coming to the world to deal a death blow to Satan. You notice it says, it, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now when you crush a serpent's head, that means that the serpent is, it, it, it is, it is totally out. There is no, no more means but for it to live. But the serpent would only bruise his heel. So Christ would be only bruised in this battle, but the Satan would be totally, Satan would be totally defeated. Mark 3, 27, it tells us, and this is Jesus in, in, in giving a, a, a little parable. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. So Christ had to come into the house, which is earth, and bind Satan and then he can spoil his house or, or destroy his kingdom. And that is what Christ came to do. When, when Christ came to free the captives, that is when he bound Satan. So by freeing the captives, because Satan had all the captives bound up, he basically loosed all the captives. When, he, when Christ came and he, and he, he proclaimed the, 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 the kingdom of God is at hand, he healed the sick and, and he proclaimed liberty. When he did all of that, in, in doing all of that and living a perfect life on this earth, that is when he was binding Satan. That was the, 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 the cause for being strong around Satan as, as it were. And his kingdom was weakening. Luke 10, 18 says, and, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, if you know, if you know of this account in the Bible, the disciples just went, Christ just sent all the disciples two by two to, you know, proclaim the gospel. And they came back with an a, a exciting report saying that they could cast out demons and they can bound all, you know, the, the power was in Christ's name to cast out demons. And, you know, they were they're saying even the, even the demons are subject unto us. And Christ gave this, uh, this, 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 this clause here. He says, and I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In other words, Christ was saying Satan kingdom was coming to an end because, and, it's, and it's he, he saw him as lightning fall from heaven because Satan still had sympathizers in heaven, even up to this time. But because of what Christ was doing, even through the disciples and people and exposing Satan and his, and his, and his wickedness, he's giving this as a prophecy of saying Satan is going to fall from heaven because his kingdom now is being, being bound up as it were because of the gospel. So every time we preach the gospel in its purity, that is we keep on binding Satan's kingdom. John 12, 31, it tells us, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now this is just before Christ went to the cross. So he's here telling the disciples that the prince of this world, Satan, is going to be cast out because this world is going to be judged. And how it's going to be judged? The cross is going to be the judgment of this world. Right? Everybody must stand before that cross. And those who accept what was done there, they will be saved. Those who reject what was done there, they will be lost. Through the cross of Christ, dealt a dead blow to Satan's power and kingdom. 
Hebrews 2.14, it tells us, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took, likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil. So Christ through his death destroys the person who had power over death, which is the devil. So he's saying Satan's kingdom was destroyed when Christ hung upon that cross and he died on that cross. So Christ's death was really his victory. It, 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 it sounds weird, but that is actually what happened. When Christ died on that cross, Satan's kingdom came to an end. It, 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 then you would probably ask, why are we still going through all this whole thing? Because Satan's kingdom is at an end. It is, that, is, that is a certainty. But there are other questions to be, to be answered in the great controversy. And only when Christ comes the second time, then those answers, we're going to have a full revelation of the, the, those answers. So the, 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 the cross basically sealed the destruction of Satan's kingdom. Although it continues today. 1 John 3.8, it tells us, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the main purpose of Christ being manifested in this world is that he might destroy the works of, of Satan. Colossians 3.15, it says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So when Christ spoiled the principalities and powers that Satan and his kingdom, how did he do that? He made a show of them. He basically exposed Satan's lies and deceptions. And when he showed those lies and deceptions and he basically triumphed over the host of Satan. So every time we expose Satan's lies, we are triumphing over his kingdom. And the only way that we can expose lies is to give truth. And who is truth? We know that Christ is truth. So the more that we uplift Christ is the more that we trample over Satan. Revelation 12, 10 to 12, it says there, and I heard a voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our bridging is cast down which accused them before our god day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto the death so this text here in revelation 12 is telling us that at the cross because we see here and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb so that means that Christ had died upon the cross. And this is a proclamation of what happened when Christ died upon the cross. Because Christ died upon the cross and the lamb, the blood of the lamb was spilt, that now became the means of how the, each son of Adam can overcome. He can only overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb. And that blood there is what? That blood represents the life of Christ. The life is in the blood. So when it says blood of the lamb, it's not, it's not, it is, it is metaphorically speaking about the life of Christ. Christ's entire life, when we look at it, when we, when we accept it as our own by faith, that is what makes us overcomers. And there's nothing that we can add to that and nothing that we can take away from that. That life began when he, when he was born in Bethlehem and it ended when he died on the cross at Calvary. And that the death on the cross basically sealed that life and his resurrection or gave him the authority to give that life to whomsoever he pleases, should they accept it by faith. And you know, that is that is the that is the, the beautiful uh, message of the gospel. So there ends the, the 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 text from the Bible, and this is our supporting quotes from the spirit of prophecy. Our first quote is taken from Review and Herald, September 24th, 1901, paragraph 4. It says, Evil originated with Lucifer. 
who rebelled against the government of God. Before his fall, he was a covering cherub, distinguished by his excellence. God made him good and beautiful, as near as possible like himself. So we see here, God poured every single thing into creating Lucifer. It says in this quotation, as near as possible like himself. So if it was possible for God to create himself, Lucifer would have been what would have been the product. But of course, there is some, there's, there's going to be one element lacking in that because it is a creative being. So which means that it does not have life within itself. Right? The only person who has life in himself as the father is Jesus Christ, the son. Right? And probably it's because of that fact Satan has a problem. But we see from this quotation, where did, where did evil originate? It originated with Lucifer, not with God. There's a story of redemption, page 17, paragraph 1. It says, it would, have been, it would not have been safe to suffer any who united with Satan in his rebellion to continue to occupy heaven. Now, I want you to pay particular attention to what is underlined. They had learned the lesson of genuine rebellion against the unchangeable law of God. And this is incurable. That is the reason why Satan and his angels cannot be saved. Because they learn the lesson of genuine rebellion. And when you learn the lesson of genuine rebellion, that is incurable. That is what places Satan outside the realm of, sal of sal salvation. Because he rebelled in the pure light of the Father and the Son. There is nothing more that God can show Satan that he has not seen already because he was in the highest of heavens. He was walking in the midst of the stones, of the fiery stones. What more can God expose Satan to that would have convinced him? There is nothing more that God could have done for him so that he could have been saved. However, man was not in that arm. Man was not in that, 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 that circle. Man was deceived. And because man was deceived... We have a chance. We have a chance of salvation still. But Satan was not deceived. Satan was Satan made the choice. Or I should say more so Lucifer made the choice to rebel against God. Which is why he cannot be cured. He cannot be cured. And his angels, they cannot be cured either. But it is not so with man. Review and Herald, September 7th. 1897 paragraph 11 it tells us time and time again during the controversy satan was ready to be convinced ready to admit that he was wrong now you notice what happened in here the spirit of prophecy is telling us that satan was ready to be convinced he was ready to admit that he was wrong but what was the problem but those he had deceived were also ready to accuse him of leaving them what should he do submit to god or continue in a course of deception. He chose to deny truth, to, to take refuge in misstatements and fraud. Now, pay particular attention to what happened in here. Satan chose to turn away from the truth. He was already convinced that he was wrong, you know. He was convinced that he was wrong, and he was ready to admit that he was wrong. However, because of pride, because he, you know, he, he led so many, one third of the angels to rebel. Those angels would have turned against him and said, well, look, you, you, you led us to this point and now you're going to leave us. And he couldn't, you know, he, his pride couldn't have, have condoned that. So he had, he, he chose to deny truth. And this is what, this here is the crux of the matter. If we are exposed to truth, and we choose to deny it. And when, when I say Satan denied truth, he denied truth in its plainest sense because he was in the highest heaven. He, he was next to Christ. So there's nothing, you know, that, um, 
you know that you know could have been shown to him more than 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 I believe God showed him that could have convinced him because God gave, basically did everything to save Lucifer before he fell he did everything and he and we see from this quotation he was convinced but because of pride he chose to not go down that road of 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 submitting to God and he continued in his rebellion and anyone who goes through the same thing that Satan went through we would suffer the same fate that is why it, it it tells us in the book of Hebrews if we if we sin right when we have a knowledge of truth they, they, there's no more sacrifice for sin you know right every sin that we commit is because we are we are we are deceived into that sin but when we make the choice and we see good and we see evil and we, and we make a conscious choice to do evil then they make they, then they makes no that that is basically we are we are we are committing the unpardonable sin there and the unpardonable is not a sin it's a it is a continuous rejection of truth until the medium through which God has given us to convince us of what is true which is the Holy Spirit we don't hear him anymore because we have totally rejected hearing the voice of God and that's what happened to Satan Satan committed the unpardonable sin God was speaking to him God was speaking to him and he continually just chose to deny and deny and deny until there was no more remedy so we see exactly what happened in heaven and the angels were cast out of heaven is the same thing that is happening on earth right now when men commit the unpardonable sin is the same is the same story going over again but the thing about it is we think that we are smart now satan convinced holy angels to rebel against god and we think that we can fight this enemy on our own strength review and herald october 22nd 1895 paragraph 1 Speaking of Satan our Lord says that he abode not in the truth he was once the covering cherub glorious in beauty and holiness he was next to Christ in exaltation and character so he was the third highest power in heaven it was the father the son and next to Christ who was the son of God was Lucifer it was with Satan that self exaltation had its origin he became jealous of Christ and falsely accused him and then laid the blame upon the father so he accused Christ and then blamed the father where he was going with this only he himself knows and we saw what we, we see the results of what has happened manuscript 86 1910 paragraph 28 and 29 will you grieve the savior that left the royal courts what did he do what did he do it for when well, lucifer was striving he had glory in the heavenly courts but he was striving for christ's place next to god next he wanted to be god but he could not obtain that christ was the only begotten son of god and lucifer that glorious angel got up a warfare over the matter until he had to be thrust down to the earth So what was Satan's problem or Lucifer's problem in heaven? His problem was that he could not accept that Christ was the son of God. And he and he got and it says here in this quote he got a warfare up over the matter. So the the, the warfare that was being fought in in heaven was over Christ being the son of God. I wonder if we have that same warfare continuing even up to the day. And people are telling us that it is not Sal- salvific we see that that warfare in heaven over christ being the son of god is what caused one third of the angels and lucifer himself to be lost could that could the kingdom and glory of this world are delivered unto me and to whom so will I will give it the the st- he stated what was true only in part and he declared it to serve his own purpose of deception satan's dominion was was that rested from adam but adam was the vicegerent of the creator 
His was not an independent rule. The earth is God's, and he has committed all things to his son. Adam was to reign subject to Christ. When Adam betrayed his sovereign, sovereignty into the hands of into Satan's hands, Christ still remained the rightful king. Thus the Lord had said to King Nebuchadnezzar, The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Satan can exercise his usurped authority only as God permits. But this quotation here from the Zav Ages, page 129, paragraph 4, is very, is very telling. It tells us that when Satan told Christ that, you know, I own all of this and I can give it to anybody who I choose, he stated a, he stated a half-truth. But the, 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 because when Adam was crowned king of this earth, it was not a it was not an independent rule that Adam was placed into. He was vicegerent of Christ. Christ was the king of this earth, and Adam ruled as almost like a co-ruler with Christ. So when Adam betrayed his sovereignty, sovereignty sovereignty into the hands of satan what happened the person who owned the earth which is christ still owned the earth it never changed it's just that his vicegerent now gave up his power he gave up he, you know he, he he didn't want to be vicegerent again and satan took that he usurped that power now it says here, Satan can exercise his usurp authority only as God permits. So even though Satan is the prince of this earth or this, or this world, all the power that Satan is manifesting right now, it is only on, under the authority of God's permission. So, so, my brothers and sisters, everything that is happening in the earth right now, everything, climate change, we see what the evil is going on, men, men doing all level of evil at all levels in the earth. All of that is still under the authority of God and God permits that. The question is, why is he permitting it? He is permitting it for us to what? Come to repentance. He's permitting it so that we can see where these men are going with this thing. And all of us can, I think we can clearly see what is going on. Even if we don't have all the answers, we can clearly see where this world is headed. And that's, and for that fact, he wants us to say, okay, we don't want to side with Satan. We don't want to side with this world. Because we see where it is heading, so that we can join with Christ and his kingdom. So, that should give us some comfort. No matter what is going on in this world, God is still the final say in all matters. Nothing happens without God's permission. Even though Satan is the prince of this world. Right? Because Adam was only a vicegerent. He was not the ultimate ruler of this world. Christ was the ultimate ruler. And you know it is bold face of, of Satan to actually is 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 no you know somebody takes something from you and selling you back what was your own already. You, you ever, you ever, I don't know if anybody ever met a thief like that. They come by a yard and probably have a shoes outside drying in the sun or something. They come and thief your shoes and then they come back in the evening the next day and they sell you back your shoes that is stole the day before. You can see the craziness, and that was Satan was basically doing. He 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 stole or he usurped the power from Adam, and then we want to give it back to the person who is who is the rightful owner of it. It it it, it, it ain't not making any sense. You see how Satan is deceptive. You see how Satan, and that's exactly what he would do to all of us. He would give us these deceptions, make it look good, dress it up nice, but basically we are already sitting in heavenly places with Christ, as the Bible says. So we don't have to accept, you know, a lot of people betray themselves into the hand of Satan because they could get a little, um, quote unquote, heaven down here on earth with all of these, you know, they have, they have money, they have fame, they have fortune and all of these things. Okay. But that has a price at the end of it. But God has given us something that, you know, he's not going to take away from us. He wants us to be the rulers of this earth. He wants us to sit as kings and priests in this earth and that's not something that he's going to take away satan satan's kingdom 
anything that he gives you always has a price that to pay at the end which a lot of people are realizing this is our last quotes signs of the time december 30th 1889 paragraph 4 it says the death of Christ upon the cross made sure the destruction of him who was the power of death, who was the originator of sin. And we know that was that is Satan. When Satan is destroyed, there will be, there will be none to tempt to evil. The atonement will never need to be repeated and there will be no danger of another rebellion in the universe of God. That which alone can effectually restrain from sin in this world of darkness will prevent sin in heaven. The significance of the death of Christ will be seen by saints and angels. So what restrains from sin in this world will prevent sin in heaven. All the fallen worlds, the, what prevents them from sinning is the cross of Christ. What saves us from sin is the cross of Christ. Every single thing in this universe revolves around the cross of Christ. That is the surety of the universe continuance. If the cross of Christ did not exist, then this whole universe would be on very shaky grounds because rebellion would have could, could have raised up again and again. Right? And of course, it would have forced the whole universe to basically disintegrate because it would have become unstable. But the stability, the surety for this universe continuing is the cross of Christ. And it says in this in this quotation here, there will the atonement will never need to be repeated. And there will be no danger of another rebellion in the universe of God. So we can be rest assured that what Christ did on the cross, that that basically was for time and for eternity. And we thank God for basic for, for, for that 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 great salvation that was wrought through the cross and through the entire plan of salvation, which will come to its ultimate conclusion very, very soon. So we thank God for that. So my brothers and sisters, thank you very much for your listening here even this evening. And here we end um, part four, the great controversy, um, section one as it will. And we see in this in, in this study that the, the great controversy is between Christ and Satan. And everything that we see in the world today is, be, is because of that problem that Satan has with Christ. Every single thing, whether it, whether it is domestic violence, whether it is um, wars and rumors of wars, whether it's climate change, every single thing that we're seeing in this world all originated because Satan had a problem with Christ and his position as the son of God. So it would, it, it, it would, it would be very strange that the last conflict that we're going to go through, we wouldn't see this conflict of Christ being the son of God raised up again. And I know a lot of people kind of have a hint of what I'm speaking about. So we see that it's going to be prominent. It might not be as prominent now, but it's going to become prominent and we're going to see probably in later studies how that is going to tie into the mark of the beast and the image of the beast because it, it is very clear that that is going to be one of the major factors of a lot of people accepting the mark of the beast along with along with many other things so here we end our study for this evening i thank you for your listening here again and now we can have our discussion if anyone has any thing that they would like to share anything that would like to you know mention from tonight's study the floor is now open for you to make your comments or to ask your questions Yes, the floor is now open. So anyone who wants to share 
share a question or, or share a comment based upon what was presented. You can unmute your mic and you can ask your question or make your comment. I do have one thing, and I, I guess it could be clarified um, in saying that God is responsible for sin. Um, the way you, you explained it, well, sin didn't originate with God, but I suppose it could be said that um, he's responsible in a sense in that he takes ownership for the result and, as you said, had a plan for it. Um, as opposed to saying um, God is responsible for the origin of it, which he is not. Okay, very true. Yes. Thanks for that clarity. So, yes, God is, God is not responsible for the origin of sin. But, yes, he does take responsibility for everything that has happened. Um, and we would have more clarity on that, I guess, as it is revealed to us in when 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 we are in heaven because there are a lot of questions i'm sure a lot of us have and he will make what is you know hidden what is darkened right now because of our sin sin condition he will make it plain in that time so thank you for your contribution and that clarity anyone else Good night, everyone. Um, Good night. Um, I think I have like two quick questions. The first one is, um, well, in the Bible, it's mentioned that Eve was deceived, right? Yes. Um, but Adam wasn't deceived. He chose to, to save, um, face the consequences of his wife's action by doing the same thing that she did. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Um, so we know Satan made sin by making a choice as well. Yes. Um, but he, the difference is he was in the presence of God, you know, so he had more knowledge and understanding of God and um, and the, and the, the law because God. he was yes and the because law he, and he, he yes right he was the, um, he was the, he was the keeper of the law so he would have an intimate knowledge of the law itself too. Right. Okay. So I'm just wondering if like um. Adam, like his, well, would have faced more severe consequences than he would because he chose, like, the sin as opposed to being, um, being fooled then. Well, to answer that question, I would say, um, we, so, we see that sin only took a hold of the, of the earth only when Adam sinned. The Bible doesn't reveal to us that when Eve sinned, anything happened to the earth. And even when we read the spirit of prophecy in Patriarchs and Prophets and Story of Redemption, um, we, 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 it tends to suggest that sin only took hold on the earth after Adam sinned, not after Eve. So the moment between Eve eating the fruit and bringing the fruit to Adam, not, there was no apparent change in, in nature. But when Adam took that fruit and, and ate it, then it, 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 the Bible basically basically cut away and says, you know, then then they knew that they were naked. Um, and that's that's a question that I guess many of us will have to, you know, we will want more clarity, I guess, in heaven because it, a lot of people will probably ask, why um, what what happened with Eve in that moment between um her sinning and bringing it to Adam when Adam didn't sin yet. Because remember, mankind was based, mankind is male and female. The female part has not rejected God. The male part has not yet rejected God or didn't reject God. So in that little moment there, what exactly was the dynamic of the human race? And I, I don't have the answer for that, but I'm guessing we will basically find it out when we when things are, are clarified. So what I can say is that um, the severe consequence that you are talking about that Adam faced was basically the destruction of nature. 
And he had to, he had, it's only when he sinned, then that came into play, not when Eve sinned. So in a sense, what you, what you just told me, Adam's severe, the, the severe consequence that Adam had to face was the destruction of nature. But Eve didn't have to face that, 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 um, that, um, that consequence when she sinned because nothing happened to nature. I don't know if that um, satisfies your your the, the answer that you're looking for, but that mm-hmm. is what that is that is from my um that's from my, my perspective. I don't know if anybody else has a, another perspective on it. Uh, good night. Good night. Yes, sir. Good night, everyone. Um, I just would like to publicly thank um Dr. Vaughn Sweet for sharing this link with me. And for to you all for allowing me to to be a part of this to listen in and be a part of this um this um Bible study. I learn a lot. All right. And uh, I, I just would like to say that um you know that um I just thank God because even though our father Adam forfeited his rulership of this realm, this kingdom, all right, earth, I thank God that the second Adam from heaven, Jesus Christ, came back to restore and to redeem mankind in spite of the wickedness that Satan has done both in heaven and here on earth. You know, and um, I thank God for Jesus again because the Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9 that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long-suffering to us, what? not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Kelvin, you said that you had another question? Um, yeah. All right. So you mentioned the quote from Ellen White, where she says, um, you know, Lucifer was made as close as possible to God. As as it well as yeah, God made him as close as possible as he could to himself as he could, right? Mm-hmm. And in this Veta prophecy, and it might also well we, and in the Bible it mentioned that man was made a little lower than the angels for a while. Right? So then that could mean man will be equal to the angels or we could be above the angels. You know, I don't know I, I don't I didn't see where it was clarified which one it was going to be. Right? Mm-hmm. And there's also a, a quotation, and I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it, right? Where she mentioned that man have the ability to continuously learn more about God and so forth, like when we get to heaven. You know, yes. and in a, in a sense, that will put us like, you know, on a, like a higher standing because it's like we're going closer and closer to God. Mm. You know, so I am also... You can probably one... check the book, Education. I think the last chapter of the book, Education, you probably might find that. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. I am also wondering, okay, like, okay, since man will have the ability to learn and understand God more and in a sense elevate, um, <clears throat> elevate, or his status would be elevated because he know and understand and love God more, right? And I don't know what else will be, um, will be improving. Um, because when I read the text, right, I got, a, um, I got the impression that Satan, apart from wanting to be like Christ, he was also jealous of the man that God created. And I'm wondering if that was because Satan saw that at some point in time, man could be elevated to a position above the position that he had. You know, it, so could be, it, it could be, yeah. That, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. Could be so. But it, 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 uh, probably the nature of man also, because man... I don't know about the, I don't know and I can't speak to the other the other unfallen beings from the other worlds, how they perpetuate. It would seem that the angelic hosts, they were all created at, they were all created at the same time. So the, it probably was a fixed number. But mankind is a is a, is a, a unique creation in that we can actually procreate. In other words, we can generate more of ourselves. Um and that is our prerogative that um belongs in the realm of god as it will angels cannot procreate they cannot create more of themselves right and god gave us that gift 
and I do not know because of that gift, um, Satan, Satan became jealous of mankind also. So that may that may be another factor also. But yeah, I, I see that that's a possibility as well. Right. Okay. So those are my two um, questions. Okay. Thanks very much for your contribution. Anyone else? Any comments on what was discussed, um, or any questions you all have? And Okay, well, I just hope that um, the night study would have opened our eyes to see um, things in a new light. And that new light being everything that we are facing right now, the, one of the crux of the matter is the, the controversy is between, when we, and when we say the great controversy, it's really the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Those are the two main uh powers that are fighting for your allegiance, for our allegiance. And of course, Christ, the only way he fights for our allegiance is through love. And Satan, he uses any any other any other thing. And we see here how he usurped the power of Adam by deception. We saw how he he ruined one third of the angels of heaven. And but we also see that he was convinced of his error, but because of pride, and that should that should put a check for all of us on you know the sin of pride, which is probably one of the the most subtle, insipid um, sin that we can commit because it's it, it it is it is so I don't know the word I would like to use, but it it can take you over so easily. And it can have a hold on your heart so, so sh with so much strength. You know, you know, this is one of the most powerful creations that God created. And pride kept him from admitting his error and going back to God. Let us not be proud in our rebellion. Let us not be proud. Let us, not, let us acknowledge our sins. And because the Bible says if we acknowledge that we sin and we confess our sins... God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank God for, you know, giving us Jesus Christ, for giving us the gospel, for giving us all these things that we have. Because anything that we have right now, any good thing that we have in this world is because of Jesus Christ. And we know that for a fact. And we know that the, because the spirit of God is being withdrawn from this earth, that is why things are going the way they are going it is not because climate change and it's not because we have the laws that we have are not effective in, if we have if we think about it the laws that we have today the the the, the we probably had some inkling of it 50 years ago but 50 years ago, there was much more law and order in the earth than it is today. Every generation, we have to have a new set of laws because men are thinking of new ways to do evil. And the, that is the main problem. The problem that we have right now is that mankind, oh, everything that we do to solve crime and to solve moral decadence, we are only treating the symptom. We're not treating the root cause of the problem. And the root cause is the heart of man, which the Bible says is desperately wicked. And the only cure for that is Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the only cure for the heart, the stony heart that we have. God says in Jeremiah that he's going to give us a heart of flesh and replace this heart of stone. That is the only way that we can be redeemed that's the only way that we can be saved that's the only way men can change from evil to good not by rehabilitation in the prison system which we know that doesn't work not by having better laws and better legislation that doesn't work not by you know having better technology that doesn't work either men will create technology they will have they will they will create so-called better laws and legislation 
and that is not going to solve the root cause of the problem so my brothers and sisters i'm saying all of that to say this if we want to see a better world the only way that we can see that is if we share the gospel with men and women the problem in trinidad and tobago the problem in the caribbean the problem in the western hemisphere the problem in the whole earth is we need a revelation of jesus christ and because men have walked away from christ that is the problem that we are having right now in the earth that war in in the gaza strip is because they don't have jesus christ the war in ukraine is because they don't have jesus christ if we have christ in our hearts if you have christ in you and i have christ in me light knows light and the spirit knows the spirit and we will not be fighting against each other the mankind only have one enemy but the enemy of mankind has deceived most of the earth i ain't gonna say all but most of the earth in the thing that we are our own worst enemy so that's why we have you know african fighting against indian african fighting against caucasian caucasian fighting against indian Indian fighting, everybody fighting against each other. Then that is just in the ethnic realm, and then we have in the we have we have the social realm, then we have the economic. Because you rich and I poor, or vice versa, I I wouldn't like I wouldn't um associate with you. You know all of these things. Satan has to be Satan is creating all of the division because he you know the best way to get the mankind is to divide and to conquer, and that is basically what he is doing right now. The only and you see, Satan wants to bring division. Christ wants to bring unity, but there can be no unity without truth, and there can be no unity by compromise. We cannot compromise the gospel and expect that we're gonna have. So all of these churches that are coming together in ecumenism and saying that you know, don't let us forget the 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 the, the let us forget our differences and only and 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 focus on our similarities. That may sound good. But those differences that we are ignoring have eternal consequences. And that is what a lot of people are not realizing. And a lot of people are going to be deceived into joining hand in hand, you know, lot in lot with everybody. And, you know, and sad to say, uh, there are inroads being made even within our own church with respect to this ecumenism movement. And you know that is that is very disheartening to see. So we need to keep our eye on what is happening, so that we ourselves don't get caught up in this thing. Yes, we want unity. Yes, we want, but unity in truth, unity in Jesus Christ, unity in the true and the pure gospel, not in this watered down. Everybody, God is love. Everybody, come together. Let us forget our differences. Not that is not the gospel. Because Christ said, I didn't come to bring peace on the earth. I came to bring a sword and to put mother against daughter and, 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 and husband against wife and etc. Et that is what Christ came to do. The gospel by its very nature is antagonistic to sin. And we are living a world of sin. So when we preach the gospel, it is not a strange thing that people are going to oppose it. It's not a strange thing that the enemy is, not, is going to fight against it. So we have a we have a we have a battle to fight, my brothers and sisters. But the good news is, we don't have to fight it alone. Christ is already champion. So all we have to do is join our hands with him. And we cannot fail. We cannot fail if we join hand in hand with Christ. Because he's already victor. He's already victor. We just have to join with the winning side. And a lot of times we are just back and forth, back and forth. So we need to we need to solidify our 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 allegiance to Christ, and and give this gospel as it supposed to be given to the world, and then we would see changes in the community. As I'll make this one last comment before we close. Um, I remember a pastor saying this. He says, if there's darkness in your community, if there's darkness in a community the problem is not the darkness you know the problem is those who are supposed to be purporting the light 
In other words, the light is supposed to dispel the darkness. So if our community has a lot of darkness, something is wrong with the light bearers. In other words, if the community of Trinidad and Tobago has all these problems, the problem is those who are supposed to be bearing the light, there's a serious problem. And the Spirit of Prophecy tells us the impenitence of the world lies at the door of the church. I'm going to say that again. The impenitence of the world lies at the door of the church. Because of what we are doing as God's people, it plays a significant part on the society that we live in. So I'm saying all that to say, brethren, whatever little corner you in, whatever corner I in, I beat myself up to with this, eh? because I, I, am a, I, am, I am in the same boat as everyone else. We need to do better. We need to... We need to go harder. We need to, you know, wherever we can spread the gospel, however we can do it, we need to do it. Find some way. Print a little pamphlet. When you jump in a car, give the driver something, something. Spread it somehow. We need to find more innovative ways to get this gospel out. And we, it, need to, it need to just keep on going up because that's the only way to bring men to conviction. By presenting Christ before them and, you know, going on our knees and praying for it's not just good enough to pray. You know, we have these days, these days of prayer and these, you know, we're going to pray for the country. Yes, that's good. But we will see that there's a work we need to do. And I pray that we will find some innovative way. I may have a way to do it. You may have a way to do it. Everybody may have some, some something different. But the thing is that we do something. And let God lead us to what we need to do. He's the one who knows our talents. And he's the one who can lead us to do what we have to do. So thank you very much for your participation this evening everyone let's say a word of prayer as we close dear father in heaven we thank you lord for this study that we had this evening and for you revealing to us the truth that is in jesus christ the truth that christ is indeed the son of god christ is our only salvation christ is the one that we need to proclaim now and forevermore he is the only way that we can get any type of peace in this world god and lord we know that we will not have peace until we see him come in the clouds of glory because men of this world have rejected him god but lord all is not lost there's a work for us to do it's enough to talk the talk but we now we need to walk the walk and lord satan is going to make this work very difficult for us he's going to attack us in our families He's going to attack us in our marriages. He's going to attack us in our, our relationships. He's going to attack us physically, Lord. He's going to try to take us out. He's going to try to, you know, bring our name into disrepute. And Lord, we know that that is because he's wrought with the woman God, which is your church. Oh Lord, we ask that you will cover us. Cover us with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit dwell within our hearts, God. May we do nothing that will drive your spirit and your presence away from us, God. We ask, God, that you will cleanse us from all our sins and our unrighteousness, God. We have done foolishly, Lord. There are so many things that we should have done and we have been far behind, Lord, especially when it comes to preaching the gospel. Lord, and we know that this the, 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 the country is in a state because the church is in a state we are not doing the work that we are we are appointed to do we are more satisfied in preaching messages that will soothe the ears of our hearers god and not ones that will arouse us to the danger that is before us to the enemy that is seeking to divide us lord oh lord i pray that we will get the holy boldness to go out and to proclaim your gospel as it's supposed to be proclaimed god with, with tact, but also with, with fearlessness, God. And I pray, Lord, that you said that the, the, the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God. And I pray, Lord, that that kingdom will start even in our hearts and it will spread even in our families and it will go further into our communities and to this country and to the whole world, Lord. Lord, we know that not everyone will be saved, God, which is an unfortunate fact. But Lord, many would be and it is upon us that that great burden is given but lord we are more than conquerors through jesus christ 
And we pray, Lord, that you will give us the strength, give us the wisdom, give us the ingenuity, Lord. Men are thinking of ways, Lord, to do evil every day, Lord. Every day we're hearing some new way to defraud, some new way to kill, some new way to, 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 to bring sorrow and, and misery to the human family, God. And men are using their, their, their God-given brain cells to do this evil, God. When we can use that, those same brain cells to find ways to, to, to bring to be a savior of life unto life, to bring hope and to bring joy and to bring love to this country, God, and to this entire world. Lord, we know that we will have an uphill battle. We know that Satan will be wrought against us and he's going to attack us left, right, and center. But God, if you are standing with us, who can stand against us, Lord? So we place all our plans into your hands. We place ourselves into your hands. God, we ask that you would take us as we are and to make us what we need to be, Lord. Be to our families, protect them, Lord, because we know once we start doing exactly what we need to be doing for this thing, Satan is going to attack us with a fury that is beyond our even our understanding, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will keep us even to that day when we shall see you face to face. Be with our families, be with our friends, be with all those who we, we would come into contact with. I pray, Lord, that you will give us means and ways, whether through finances, whether through whatever you deem necessary, God, that we can spread this gospel, God. And I pray, Lord, that when Christ is in me, when Christ is in my brother, when Christ is in all of us, God, that we will be unified under one front to proclaim this gospel to the world and bring this book to an end so that you can come and that we can see you and that we can go home with you. This we ask in Jesus' name, thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.